Hello everybody and welcome back. Thanks for tuning in to another episode here in the series. My name is Dominic. I'm the host of the Android Factor. Last episode we went ahead and finalized our sign-in flow here. So we have user input uh, for username and password. We go ahead and sign in. We see the screen update to uh, you know the signed in state. They can log out if they want. You can see their username, phone number, location, etc. I'm going to continue building out this page here by handling if they click on maybe the phone number or the location because you know we can actually do something with that. We can interact with uh, intents within the system to go ahead and tell the device to do something else. So as we get started here, smash that like button to help me out. Subscribe if you are brand new and uh, sit back and enjoy. So we see here we have a phone number. We're going to go with that one first. And basically inside of our profile fragment here, uh, all of the guts is in our on view created. It's pretty straightforward here. This just manages all of the data uh, and updating the screen based on the state of the user. But we have something here we have an epoxy controller, the profile epoxy controller, and we feed it profile UI actions. And this is basically like an interface between the controller and our view model here to handle different things, right? So we have a little sign in hook. We have another hook here to kind of handle when any of these elements are selected. And we're kind of just using the ID of the drawable that we see on the left hand side of these uh, rows here as, you know, some unique identifier. So we could see here that when they select the uh, profile item for the phone, which would be this row right here, you know, we kind of have this blocked off and same idea here for location. So we have our view model here. We can leverage that and we can use our view model to basically pass some stuff out. So I'm going to go ahead and collapse these other functions that have to do with login, logout, and a little helper along the way. And then we're going to just build out this uh, function here to handle our telephone intent. Off camera, I found this little Google search here, and uh, it's pretty straightforward to actually implement an intent to create, uh, you know, or tell the device, hey, we want to call this number, basically. All we really need is the phone number. Uh, everything else is hard coded, and uh, yeah, we just handle that intent. So we could do so very easily here, but if we take a look at our application state, we see that we have an auth state object in here, and in the case where we are authenticated, we do have a user object. On that user, we do have yep a phone number right here that we can use. So we can leverage this information here. So we're going to create a function. Let's just say we're going to go with send call intent here. Let's go ahead and just create what we need. So we need first an intent. This is how we communicate anything to the to either the application or the Android system itself. We're going to use the intent action of dial here, and we're going to say intent dot. Uh, yeah, I believe it's a data equals URI dot parse and we're going to need to say telephone colon and then we need to access our uh, you know our phone number here. Okay, so let's back this up real quick and we're just going to say phone number. We obviously don't have a reference to it, but we're going to get that. And so in order to get our phone number here, we're going to say store dot read and inside here we can say if it dot auth state is authenticated then we can say it dot auth state dot user dot phone number lovely we obviously have this little issue here because read is a suspending function so we could just very easily wrap this entire function inside of view model scope dot launch and now let's go ahead and see what the uh, okay, so that is unit. All right, so we basically need to specify both scenarios here, of course, because we do return whatever we get back from this read block. So this phone number now is a nullable string because, you know, it is possible that they are not authenticated, I guess, um, just handling all the scenarios. I think we can clean this up here by saying it.authState as uh, question mark. Well, I mean, Realistically, they can't possibly get to this point. So I don't think we really need to do too much error handling. So we can just simply cast it here. And then uh, we just call user phone number. And then this will just take care of all that. We don't need this nullable string anymore. And now we have our phone number that we care for. Uh, yes, I guess this is slightly unsafe in the sense that we are just casting it straight up, straight out. So if we call this function when we are not in an authenticated state, the app will crash. But, you know, from where we're calling it, I don't see how we could possibly get there with uh, an unauthenticated user. So then the last little bit here is normally you would just have to call start activity with the intent. 
and uh, that would launch everything. But we're obviously inside of a view model. We don't have reference to this start activity. That's something that you have at the fragment or activity level here. So I think the best thing that we could do is just create some kind of a flow here uh, to handle this propagation for us. Okay, and as we see here, I've just gone ahead and created, you know, the pretty basic private mutable state flow and public regular state flow. We're gonna have a nullable intent here be our uh, type and we're gonna initialize it to null. Inside of here, we can just very easily say intent flow dot emit our intent. Very, very good. Uh, and then at our fragment level, we just simply have to listen to that. So we will say our auth view model dot intent flow. Now, if we see here, this is a, uh, a state flow of intent question mark, right? A nullable intent. So what we can do here is we can say filter non null uh, as live data and then observe here. We'll attach our view lifecycle owner and then we have our intent at this point. Then it's very straightforward. All we have to do is call start activity with intent uh, and we're all good here. So the last little bit is just connecting up our profile UI actions here. We're just going to simply say view model dot send call intent. You could even one line this because oh, why not? We'll do so like that. And uh, that's about it. So I think we are ready to go here. Let's go ahead and rerun things real quick. And coming back to life here, we have uh, our profile. We are, of course, signed out um, because we are not uh, saving the state. Sorry, that's the password. We have Bonero and Uidon. Cool, cool. Go ahead and sign our user in. And if we go ahead and click our phone number, we now see 17765796734. If we were to go back, come on, how do we go back? Yep, if we were to go back to the application here, we see that that is the same phone number. And so we very easily just, you know, kind of communicate to the system. You see here that our app is here, and this is, you know, kind of that, uh, you know, the, the phone call uh, contacts app, whatever it is. Um, so we could see here that we're just simply telling, oops, sorry about that. We're just simply telling our application here to, you know, dial this particular number here that we have from our user and the system will take care of the rest. If the user has a separate app on their phone that, you know, they make calls out of, the system will default to using that one. As long as we basically give it the, you know, generic uh, URI string here, the telephone colon and a phone number, as long as all that is properly formatted, all of those apps say, hey, we know how to handle those interactions. Yep, go ahead, start us and you know do so with our information populated right here. They could obviously just click call. They could change around the number. You could do whatever it is that you want to do at that point. Uh, yep, so that's about it. Short and sweet, pretty straightforward, easy enough to send intents out. I think in the next episode, we'll go ahead and do something similar with our location because we could probably leverage Google Maps pretty easily. Uh, and we already have the plumbing set up here, right? We already have our intent flow. We already are observing it inside of our activity, uh, sorry, our fragment. So the fragment doesn't necessarily care what the intent is. It just knows, hey, I have an intent that I should launch and here we go. That's about it. So if you made it this far in the video, comment real fan, really appreciate the uh, help and the support. Please do smash that like button to get this stuff out there a little bit for other folks and um, subscribe if you're brand new. I'll catch you guys in the next one. Enjoy the day. Thanks.